Because you were thrown into the spotlight, right? Mm -hmm. um, when Russell Brand and Jonathan Ross left a series of offensive voicemails on your grandfather's phone, do you sort of remember what, what they said? Do you know what? It, it was such a long time ago, but I... It was just a really weird, like, situation where I didn't really feel connected to myself. I didn't know what was going on, and I just put myself wherever they told me to go. And, um, yeah, I was in fight or flight. I was very, very... Um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't very well in the head. <laughs> how, how did you first find out what happened? So I was at work, and um, Russell called me. I missed it because I was working. And he said, you better break into your grandparents' house because uh, me and my naughty friend, Jonathan, and then I heard him cackling in the background. Um, have left a message on on his answering machine. And I was like, oh, God, like, here we go. Because I already had a strange relationship with them because at that time I was going through a lot of... I had undiagnosed mental health issues and I also, you know, was on, on the way to becoming a full-blown addict. And, um, yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. And he was, I guess, treating it as a joke. Yeah, well, it was. You know, it was, and I was a joke. I was a joke to everybody, and I dared to open my mouth. But she doesn't matter, because look at her. You know, it, it, I was the unknown being kissed and told on, and my biggest mistake was talking about it. I shouldn't have said a word, because at that time, they would twist everything in the men's favour. So Russell went off and, and did a tour all about it, and there I was, couldn't get a job couldn't get a day clean and sober. Um, it was really rubbish. What really struck me about the time, and I really remember the story, you know, we're the sort of same age, I, I remember what, what a big story was. We are was the same the age. Exactly the same age. <laughs> um, but it was all told through the lens of the men involved. Yeah. It was told about the impact on your grandfather and not really about the impact on you. Mm. Did you sort of feel that? Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I do. I have managed to, like, say my piece a few times. And I think as the years have gone by, my words are twisted less and less. Mm -hmm. At the time, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to say anything because I knew that they would sew together what they wanted so that they got the narrative. Um, and so I just feel like it was just total slut-shaming, you know, the big Scarlet S on me and, oh, well, but it doesn't matter. Boys will be boys because she's a slut, so it's fine. It doesn't matter who her grandfather is. And really, I could be the biggest slut in the entire world and it would still be wrong what they're doing. What they, they bullied my grandfather, who was a sweet old man, didn't deserve it, didn't ask for it. I, I wish that I had never told Russell who he was because I didn't need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It feels to me like Russell Brand almost made money out of what happened. He did. He did. But it impacted your career in a negative way. Well, I mean, at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, you know, so I had to spend 10 years trying to figure that out. Um, and luckily, Adam Ant gave me a job in his band, so that was really nice. It put some distance between being the sax gate girl and the present in that time. So that was during my mid-20s. And then... That sort of dried up, and then I went to drama school, and that's where, like, the, the drink and the drugs really became a problem. YouTube have today stopped Russell Brown being able to make money out of his videos on YouTube. Really? Do you think that's a good thing? Or no. do you think it's cancel culture? No, it's cancel culture, because, look, Russell made a mistake when he was younger, right? And when he made his amends to me, he looked me in the eye, apologised, and said... You know, he wasn't working a program. And as an addict in recovery, I understand where he's coming from. So what happens with addiction is you can cross-addict onto other things. So um, if, you, if you put down, let's say, I don't know, heroin, you might pick up a behaviour addiction if you're not working a program like bulimia or sex addiction. And so obviously, Russell was newly clean and sober, fairly newly, newly clean and sober, and I think 
it's very common for, for people to cross addict into sex addiction. And when he made his amends to me, I felt like he took full ownership of that. Because he did say sorry to you, right? He, he, he looked me in the eyes and apologised, and he also sent me to rehab, you know, so I... That's all I can ask. Have you forgiven him? I have, yeah. That, that, that's all I can ask of somebody in recovery that's working the same steps that I am. How about the BBC? Um, because it feels to me like this is the other part of the story, right? He was almost encouraged by some of the media companies and some of the production companies around him. Do you forgive the BBC? I don't really care about them. They don't take up any airspace in my mind. <laughs> Are you glad that there's investigations going on into some of his behaviour? Anybody that's been a victim of sexual abuse needs justice. I don't know what happened there. I don't know because I wasn't there. He never did anything like that with me. Everything was more than consensual, I promise. But um, I, I, I've seen some of the evidence and I do find it quite compelling, to say the least. <laughs> do you believe them? Oh, I know it's hard to... I can't really say, like, like I, I don't have all the evidence. But you find it compelling. I do. Well. Yeah. I find it compelling and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. Um, we've been talking a bit about what happened to you and the attitudes at the time. Do you think things have got better? Yeah. If it were to happen now, it, his career would be over. And so would Jonathan Ross's, who is the one that I actually have more of a problem with. Really? Yeah. And why is that? because he never saw fit to talk to me. So he hasn't apologised? He never said a word, and I think he will never say a word, because I, I'm a slut, I'm not important, right? That's interesting that he hasn't apologised to you. No. I'd assumed, to be completely honest, that he had. No, he apologised to my granddad because he's respectable, but I'm, I'm just some girl uh, who, who did a kiss and tell in his eyes. So he apologised to your granddad, but not to you? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like him to apologise now? I don't know. I don't care about him enough. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I would just some, some sort of acknowledgement would be nice, you know, because I feel like I don't matter, you know, and, um, and that is part of the shame that comes with addiction. You know, I've had to do a lot of very hard work to get to where I am mentally. And, um, I think a lot of things have been brushed under the carpet and it's time to get them out. Well, you're doing that now. I am. I quite like it, even though this is a lovely carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.